Hi, this is Synth Paradox with the Hunting Party Podcast. On behalf of the show, I'd like to extend our congratulations to longtime friend of the show, Michelle Morrow, on her recent engagement. Congrats on getting your best in slot ring. Stalker, dragon, stalker, crypt, stalker, demon, stalker, rip, stalker, grown, stalker, grip, stalker, scourge, stalker, wind runner. I'm a pony, leap, skill, hunter. A death dealer, a life stealer. That's just the cost of being awesome. Sauce. Welcome to episode 254 of the Hunting Party Podcast. I'm Dark Brew from thebrewhall.com and the Brew Hall on Twitter. I'm Delirium from Thrill of the Wild and at Delirium Hunts on Twitter. And I'm Bendak from Eyes of the Beast, Blizzard Watch, and Bendak Wow on Twitter. All right. Today is Sunday, February 12th, 2017, and we are broadcasting live on twitch.tv, where you can participate in the live chat room where our lovely moderator, Ali Saunders, is there to take your questions. And so I think we're going to just kind of wing it today. When I, I, I think you, everyone was surprised to kind of pull up the show notes and see it pretty much empty. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh-oh, what are we going to do? So, uh, so the race... instead of Hunting Party Podcast, we'll be talking about classic rating. Yeah, so classic rating. That, that is an interesting concept, although, I mean, just to jump back to the course, if we don't include that in the, as like, sort of a pre-show, no one will know what we're talking about. But, but <laughs> Allie was, was telling us before the show how she was, uh, with the CTR Guild, they were doing uh, Nax Ramus at level. So basically, they had tunes that they leveled up to level 80, they turned off their XP gains, and then they were just kind of going back into the instance and doing it at level which is kind of an interesting concept to think and i think you guys were talking about i guess what you said blizzard maybe had discussed at one point in time maybe doing time walking raids yeah i don't know how well that that would work i know i've seen other games where they haven't done time walking raids per se but they had sort of scaled all their existing raid content so that you could play it at max level <laughs> and that was like their end game and i know that did not go over uh, all that well well, yeah, we yeah. used to do like hunter soloing, and also the Warcraft Hunters mm-hmm. Union used to do um, raids, old and new, sort of at level, just like all hunter raids. And I think that would be even better because those were fun. You haven't seen anyone do an all hunter raid in in a while. I don't know if anyone's did they do a little bit of it in Warlords of Draenor. I don't know if any any of the groups tried to do all hunter raiding for any of the Warlords of Draenor dungeon before. Um, we switched over to Legion or not, or if that was, you know, <clears throat> too difficult. It got a lot to harder do. when they took away our ability to solo that we used to be really good at. But uh, I'm hoping someday we'll get that back because those were good times. Yeah, you know, I can't so. recall in uh, what happened. In- uh, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's like you said, it's a challenge, right? I mean, it's, it's hard to figure out where, where do you draw the line for something like that because with each expansion some of those those previous raids become so easy that a a they're they're soloable to the or and so it doesn't make sense to do them with a group so it's trying to find that 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 what point do you go in there and do it with a group like an all hunter group that you think you have a chance of defeating something you know and, and have it be challenging and have it not be at a point where it's so easy that you know one or two guys could go in there and and, and do it But I don't know. I'm just reading the chat room here. Um, I guess we let's just. This is interesting. So uh, Corbo the Hunter was saying. He said, unrelated to anything. What are your opinions on a creature being unkillable while being tamed? And he's saying, for example, I was up till 5 a.m. today waiting on the Octurus to spawn. I started taming him, and an 85 Hunter on the other faction comes in and kills him while I am taming just because he won't get him. Which, that's just like a horrible thing to do. I don't understand why people want to be such jerks like that and, 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 and do something like that, especially with a with an NPC, uh, with a pet like Arcturus, who I think is probably still one of the hardest ones to get, in, in my opinion. And I haven't tried to, to tame him in a, in a long, long time, but I think he's just one of the harder ones to get. Yeah, I'm not sure about the unkillable part. I think the problem is cross realms. It's just because all the lower levels have are just completely saturated because of the mm-hmm. cross realms. They uh, there's just no way to ever find an off time 
if if there is downtime on your server or on any server, then they just fill it in with more servers. So there's no like you can't go at five in the morning and hope nobody will be there. Uh, it, and when somebody in this situation specifically, it's somebody from the other realm, but they're mm -hmm. not going to be on the same realm as you for very long. So if you want to get some payback and you know do some PvP and you can't do it, <laughs> you like, can't you know, or just tell other people on your realm, hey, this guy's a jerk. We wanna you know. Yeah, especially you know when you see someone else. I you know I don't you know. If I see someone camping a spot, I just let them be, certainly, and certainly wouldn't want to interfere with uh, the, the taming of a pet like that. I mean, it's just wrong. But, I mean, I don't know how, I don't, I, you know, like I said, I don't know what the workaround it is. As you said, the cross realm certainly made it more difficult. I mean, I don't know if you've done this, Bendek, is there are ways that you could, you know, maybe group up with someone to get yourself on a, on a low population realm or like one of those rp realms i mean are there like still like those rp uh, pvp realms that have like nobody on them where you might have a better chance is that still a thing that, that people can try and do the only way you're going to do that is if you have a friend who's on one of those servers and they also go to the same zone you're in because you can't hop zones any hop realms anymore unless the group you're joining is in the same zone so it's a lot more difficult to do that now. Um, one one zone you can still do that in is for the spirit moose because there's mm -hmm. always people there's always people in Stormheim, so it's relatively easy to hop around there and get that. But yeah, for stuff like Arcturus and stuff, it's uh, yeah, it's just cross realm is just at, at any given time there's only a handful of of uh, Grizzly Hills zones even active across you know mm. however many realms there are mm -hmm. so you have like a hundred realms and there's like three or four grizzly hills so it's kind of difficult we saw yeah. that recently too with the the new fox he'd go to duskwood and there's like <laughs> a, million, a million hunters everywhere yeah, yeah i'm really so curious how that looks to a new leveling player i to see all these like max level players just standing yeah. around looking in like bushes that. yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> which I haven't tried to do. I mean, an another possibility too is they could always just reduce the the spawn timer uh, for something like that. Again, it makes it more common. But again, it's not like it's a, a new pet. I mean, it's what's been in the game for since Wrath of the Lich King, what almost eight, seven, eight, nine years almost. I mean, it's been it's been around for a while. It's 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 not a new pet. I don't know if it would hurt anything if they were to just reduce the the spawn timer to something reasonable instead of whatever it is now, which I think is like several hours, you know, make it 15 or 20 minutes or something like that. Does it have to be uh, that hard to get? Do they need these 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 old pets to to have such long spawn timers? I think it's okay if some pets have a long spawn timer. I just I I don't know because if if they're if you could just walk up and get any of these pets at any time, they lose some of their prestige, I guess. But like the porcupines. Yeah. Yeah, the porcupines, right? They're, they're, yeah, they're they're like disposable. Which one did you say, Allie? Ichiaki, the white lion. It's pretty easy to get. Mm -hmm. I know when they first in implemented cross realm zones, they did reduce the spawn times of all those rares, but maybe not enough. Like mm -hmm. they, whereas they used to be maybe as as long as a day, and they reduced it to like four hours or something. Right. I don't know, maybe something like two hours would be better, but. Yeah, that might be be better. Or or for something like Octaurus, you know, give them more than one spawn point too. That would certainly help a little bit. So I mean, you'd have to instead of just sitting in one single spot where you where you know he's going to appear, you know, maybe give him multiple spawn points within Grizzly Hills, such that you just can't sit in one spot. You maybe have you have to fly around and and hope you get lucky like Lokwanahawk or something like that. <clears throat> It doesn't mean someone can't still swoop in and, and and spoil the fun, but it just makes it a little bit harder harder to do. Yeah, I don't think there's a real solution to that, like that I can think of. If you make the pet immune to damage, then mm -hmm. someone's going to find a way to exploit that somehow. And I don't know. There's always been jerks like that. I mean, that happened to me with Skull, like way back in the day. The first mm -hmm. time I tried to get Skull, someone came in and killed it. But yeah. They could instance yeah. you off to be 
by yourself, basically, when you start the taming, but that's pretty much about it. Yeah, I remember somebody suggesting that. I can't remember when it was. If it, were, it might have been you before, <laughs> but uh, for going, I don't think they're ever going to implement something like that for past pets or old expansions, but going forward, that would be a fun way to do challenge tames as if it was a separate into instance. Mm -hmm. And then things like, what, what was the fell wolf? I can't remember her name. Fell Rangari Anara, something like that. Right, right. That was so much fun on, in PTR at least, I remember, you know, being Bindak going out there and playing with her, seeing what all the abilities were. Mm -hmm. How to do it on each spec. Uh, I don't know. Something like that if it was instanced. So you could only do it solo. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I'd love to see that. And then the tame, you know, it can be, there can be tons of them sitting around. It doesn't matter how many of them are if you can only tame it with that specific item. Yeah, I you think they've got it. a pretty pretty good variety now when you think of all the new ones they've added, like the fell wolf and scor the scorpions, all the mechanical pets, mm -hmm. the ones that you have to flare like i don't know i think it's mostly those old ones that are still a problem you could make it a quest where you tell somebody in your garrison or order hall or whatever that you're going to go out and uh you know choose from a list of of table pets and just say you're going to go and tame lokonok or at least go look for lokonok and that'll basically set you off onto a quest with your own little scenario and your own little mm -hmm own little world, so to speak. That would work. Hmm. Yeah, and, and part of it's the nature of these these pets, too. Something like Lokwanahak, I mean, they just, whoever designed that just did a really amazing job with the look of that pet. I mean, it's it's probably one of the most, un still one of the most unique looking and best looking pets uh, in the game, even though it's been around for a while. I mean, I don't think there's anything that really looks quite like it in the game, and I think Arcturus has a fairly unique model too i mean you know it's more than than than, than just a bear so i mean that factors into it too when you they're they're not only are they rare but they're 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 very cool and very unique looking enough too that they become very very desirable for that when people want to have those but you know back to what uh, you know corbo the hunter was saying not only did did someone kill it from him but it was another hunter that did it and that's that, that just makes it even worse right you know I get it if the rogue does it or the paladin or or, or or something like that. But when another hunter who, you know, should understand what's, what's involved in, in getting these things and, and, you know, how much fun it is to, to go and tame one of these things goes in there and steals your kill. Well, that's just, that's really bad. I think that makes it like a hundred times worse than if, say, like a rogue or or some other class came in there and went and, 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 and did that. Yeah, I think they should have it so, like, if a hunter kills one of those rare pets that should get like a seven day debuff that says they're a bad hunter yeah. <laughs> something i mean you just uh yeah well yeah. And that's with look there was there's an achievement you have to kill him for right there is i think it still exists uh it was to kill i forget the name of it but yes it was to kill uh many of the rares um in north rand and lokwanahak was on that list which was really sad i don't know if king crush was on that list too or not he is, yeah. I think he's on the list, too. Well, if you think it's a problem, even if it's not a, like a giant problem, post on the forums about it. That's the only mm -hmm. way that they're going to look at it and see, oh, yeah, that is a thing, and maybe we could do like a simple fix for that. But if nobody mentions it to them, nobody's going to fix it. Yeah, perhaps. I just can't imagine them spending the time to... I mean, sometimes they'll go and adjust like some of the old content, but I just can't imagine that they would even bother to touch these at this point. Yeah. Well, one thing that's worth one one thing that's worth noting about those achievements, um, they did change it so that taming the pet counts towards the achievement. You don't have to kill it. Oh, huh. I didn't know that. Well, that's good. Yeah, that wasn't like that in the beginning. So if you wanted to tame it, you know, and get the achievement, you know, you had to be lucky and like find it twice, and then you had to. <laughs> Be the one to, to kill it and hope no one was around to see you killing it, you know. See, so <laughs> um, but yeah, that's 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 something I, I was not aware of, so that's cool. I yeah, think I've, they I've added got... that in, in 7.0, I think. Hmm. But yeah, so any other uh, hundred problems that we can solve. I don't know. That's a that's a that's one of those frustrating things. Like you said, the cross realm really. I mean, I was fortunate to get 
many of those teams prior to uh, Cross Realm being being implemented. So it was much easier, especially yeah. towards like you know towards the end of an expansion when you know because there are only so many hunters uh, on on your realm, and you know there's only populations only so big as well. So it just you know made it a lot easier to get to get lucky for some of those. Yeah, I had a little path I would do all across Northrend and mm -hmm. got low on several hunters, which is, I don't know, it was pretty great. It was so easy back then, even though it was such a rare timer. I don't know, it was still, it seemed way easier than it is today. Speaking of lucky, can I brag off topic for just a second? <laughs> Let's hear it. Yes. <laughs> I got the pink love rocket. Oh, wow. cool. Congrats. I did say it was off topic. That's right. The love and the love is in the air event is going on right now. I've got to go do that. I haven't, I don't, I've had, or I haven't gotten the rocket yet. I don't know how much I would use it, but I don't know. I like the the flying rockets are kind of fun as far as mounts go. <clears throat> I'm using it on my engineers because mechanical things just seem to go for that with not with my uh with my gnomes because they're all engineers because mm. of course they are. Yeah, I don't do any of the love is in the air stuff give you AP. If not, I don't have time. <laughs> no, it doesn't. You get toys, though. Nope, that's not AP. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Speaking of like hunter challenges, I I mean this the we and we haven't talked much about uh, seven point two, which is on the PTR, and it's the sort of parsing it out in chunks. Did they implement the flying mounts and and the class mounts on there yet? I mean, I know that was supposed to be like like probably like a they were going to make that sort of be like a challenge for for each class, kind of along the lines of the Warlock uh, Fellfire uh, quest line. I don't know if they yeah, I haven't heard put that out there yet. I'm curious to know what how involved it is or what that's like. You know, I was thinking about when you're talking about you know things like those hunter taming challenges. I think you know going for our class mount will probably be along those those lines as well. Well, it's, it's hard to imagine because there's just nothing really interesting about hunters right now like we don't have mm -hmm. unique utility or i don't know do any much of anything but damage we can slow mm -hmm. oh you know we don't have trank shot we don't have distracting shot a lot of the kind of quirky utilities we used to have or you know so if i like fell and Aranara that we talked about there's nothing there's no version of that you could do right now they strip down hunters too much yeah and the challenge in seven two it's it's actually for artifact appearance. Oh, that's right, artifact appearance, not not for the mount. That's right. But I knew, I knew there was something class related that was going to, you know, be. I think they said what solo oriented anyway, that we would have yeah. to do. Be like a solo scenario, probably. Mm -hmm. Something like the proving grounds, but tailored to your class. Well, there was a good solo scenario in MOP, I think, uh, on the. Well, not the ring. What did we have in MOP? Cloak. On the cloak where you had to go with Rathion to do, uh, I don't know, something up in the northwest corner of the map. Uh, I think it was sufficiently difficult, and especially there were a few specs that had a real hard time with it, and hunters could pretty much blow through it, but you still had to do a little bit of thinking. So I guess something like that would be fun. Uh, there's a lot they could do mm -hmm. that would still be interesting that's more generic for any DPS, but. Yeah, I remember there was one part of that cloak quest that involved pulling the, was it the world boss uh, on Thunder Island or whatever, and, and hunters were able to to do that. Oh yeah, do it solo. Yeah, by, by your solo, so. yeah. I remember that, which was kind of cool. <laughs> Especially if you're doing it like after uh, everyone had finished up that raid and right. no one was actually going and killing that boss or doing anything down there. Um, it was That was helpful. Do you think that with the way Blizzard often will kind of ping pong back and forth uh, when they make things, that next expansion will get all of our, our uh, get all of our abilities back? <laughs> I don't know. It was a weird they decision do tend to make. They to go pretty far out. Like, you know, you're going to have garrisons, and then you're going to have none, and then you're going to have no quests, and then you're going to have like a million quests. They've always been very, um, you know, they're. There's no middle ground, no like small baby steps for them. So, mm -hmm. since we are so pruned back, I just wondered if 
Maybe next time we'll get like things back. Fill up our bars again. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I kind of do, but my bars are full anyway, so. Well, they have a habit lately, I mean, of introducing like a big feature like a garrison and, and now with Legion, the, the artifact weapon, where it's just this major feature and they, they center the expansion around it, but it's only available for that particular expansion and then it then they're done with it <laughs> and then it goes away. I'll be curious to see what they do in the next expansion with the the artifact weapon. I mean, I mean, you know, when what they'll do to replace replace that since it's such a big part of this expansion right now. Yeah, that'll be pretty interesting. I haven't really heard them say anything about if they think that think of it as a success or not, but we're still only what four months in, five months, so I guess it's too early to. Oh, weird. I, it seems like it's been forever. It yeah. feels like forever, but it's really not. It's only February, November to February, so. But um. It's because I, I try to know. repress Wad. <laughs> well, I mean, this expansion's been out for a while. I mean, what we're it's been six months at now, at least. Has it since November? I Wait, thought November. it was after. It was no, 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 no. It was August. August. Yeah, August oh, that's when August it came 30th, out. August thirtieth. Yeah. August thirtieth is when when Legion came out. It was one of the earlier releases that they've they've done. What happened uh, in November? <laughs> Something Blizzcon. happened, right? Well, BlizzCon, Blizzcon happened in November, that's, that's but nothing. Good. I mean, we've just been plowing along since the end of August here. I mean, we've had what Emerald Nightmare, Trial of the Champion to get those two raids, and now we're on on Nighthold. But yeah, so we've been dealing with the artifact weapons for a while, but um, but again, I mean, so much is built around that, right? We've got the the you get abilities out of those weapons as well as all the all the traits which which buff up our our characters as well. So, you know, all that's going to have to go away, and then they'll have to either remove it entirely, you know, from our game from the game and from the classes, or they'll have to see what's worked out really well and you know start to bake some of that into the classes as well <clears throat> but whatever they plan to do i mean it just seems like the, you know these classes you know and the hunters is everybody but but hunters will be in for some significant changes again in whatever the next adventure is yeah they did announce on the uh i think it was lore made a big post on the ptr forums or on some forums um, saying that they weren't planning very much class fixes or changes coming in 7.2, that they were pretty much done for the expansion, which I thought was really disappointing. But hopefully that means there are huge changes coming for the next expansion. All right. Well, I mean, you know, Bendik, you had mentioned this. Well, why don't we talk about this? Um, some of the traits, because we are getting some new traits, correct, coming in 7.2 for our artifacts. Our artifact weapons are, are growing, so before they, they go well, away... Well, I don't know if they're growing. But stripped for the to, for the next... Uh, stripped and then grow a little more. Expansion. Uh, we are going to have to work on... We're not done. We're, we, we're going to need to continue grinding out that attack power. <laughs> All right. Oh, did we lose him? Well, I'm still here. I was trying to pull something up. Sorry, guys. Oh. Um, no, Ben, yeah, are you there? I'm here. Yeah, oh. I'm here. Okay. I'm here, but I was having a crazy thought, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was thinking that what if instead of having three specs that they moved us down to like just two specs or maybe even just one spec to simplify their workload, but they would never do that. No, I'd be pretty upset if they did. Yeah, people would quit in droves. <laughs> well, if, if that you had were just to happen, had the hunter and the hunter had all of the abilities, that might actually not be so and bad. That's, that's what it was like in Wrath or Wrath and before, where you could just choose, or really Kata and before, I guess, where you put your talents into the tree that you wanted, and so oh, you kind of right. built the spec. I about that. <laughs> so that's I don't I don't think they're going back to something like that. Actually, I kind of like doing that. Because there was well, there was the one true spec, of course, but or, or at least incredibly choice. Incredibly hard to balance. But, yeah. I mean, but you I know, like the ability. Well, it's to not like they're things. doing well now, so. <laughs> well, you know what they could do is maybe um, 
uh, make survival a tanking spec. I'd like that. That'd be fun. But since it's the only fun spec we have right now, oh, I'd geez. be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I want a solo spec back, which I guess could be the tanking spec. That's spec. survival, yeah. It's already there. Just got to learn to play in melee. Anyhow, I'll talk for back to what you were saying. So I, I think unless they've updated it more, we've got three new, um, completely new traits for each, yeah. each spec, and then new everything that was three of three can go up to four of four. That's right. So when you first go on seven two, you do a quest, and basically, as long as you, well, you get this quest if your artifact is level thirty five or higher. And then the, it refunds all of your AP above 35. And then you get to put all that AP into new traits. And any AP that you've already spent... Or no, sorry, I'll go back. All of the AP in the, the current infinite trait we have, or quote-unquote infinite, mm -hmm. that goes up to 54, everyone gets that. Even if you haven't grinded to 54. But the people that did grind to 54 just get a head start on the new traits. So they're going to get all, so they'll get all that artifact power refunded, is what you're saying, and yeah. everyone will get the trait. And I believe too, right? You can't. They've designed it such that you're not going to be able to basically stock up on um, artifact no. power, right? right? So I mean, you know, don't you know if you if you're hanging onto those like items that you get from dungeons and 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 raids and stuff like that, there's there's no point to hanging onto that, right? I mean, you're just going to lose it if you do. Well, they're still yeah. worth gold, so you can cash it in now or later. Somebody did the uh, the math looking at what they currently have on the PTR, which hopefully will not stand because it's completely ridiculous. But uh, so max artifact knowledge is going up to something like 400,000%. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> um, but the AP needed to finish your weapon is in the tens of millions uh tens of billions <laughs> that's something ridiculous um yeah so four billion thirty five million seven hundred sixty six thousand <laughs> three hundred thirty is the ap you needed so if you consider that if you just did mauve soul on mythic plus between levels six and nine you would have to do one thousand and nine of them to finish your uh weapon and if you already have 54 traits, instead of having to do 1,009, you'll have to do 992 of them. So basically, uh, it's going to be a lot of grinding. Just painful grinding. Do we want to take bets now if Roger was actually going to do that? And that grinding starts pretty If anything would break early. a Mythic Raider, that would be it. Because if you have 54 traits, the artifact power you get back you only get enough back to buy four of the new traits. Mm -hmm. So, and there's 15 new traits plus 20 of the bonus traits. So 35 new total ones. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, maybe they just want this to last for the rest of the expansion. That's why it's so high. I don't know. I guess it makes you wonder how long they, they're planning to have this expansion run <laughs> that's the case that seems like an awful lot well they're yeah. still going to be at 7.3 with right uh yeah. where, what do they say that was going to be argus that's yeah it sounds like legion's yeah. going to last a long time which i think is fine i don't have a problem with yeah, that as, as long as, as there's they're... new content coming out exactly if they're able to put new raids and things out uh that i i don't think anyone will really complain about that i don't think there's any need because look, I mean, mostly, what do we get with the the new expansion? You get a bunch of class changes. You got to, and you're kind of starting over again too, right? You've got to level up your professions and your character, and you got to regear your tunes. I mean, it's a lot of starting over, trying to get to the point where 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 most of us are now. So, I mean, I wouldn't mind them stretching this out a little bit longer and just adding new adding new raids and new things to do. And I would think, you know, Argus sounds like it's going to be hopefully more than just a raid. Probably, you know, that might be their version of uh, what is it, like the, the, the Timeless Isle or, or the Tanan Jungle or something like that, perhaps. 
Oh, well, there's already one of those in 7-2, the broken shore. Mm -hmm. That's going to be like a timeless aisle type thing. Yep. Well, at some point, they do have to sell us a new box and get their 60 <laughs> to 70, 90 bucks, depending whatever it is. I guess they do. But yes, so they have to have something to talk about at BlizzCon. Uh, they're making plenty of money selling WoW tokens, so they're good. Mm-hmm. Huh. I thought oh, the sales must be down because it costs so much more gold now. Well, the demand went up, so more people were buying them to sell gold, basically. Or to buy gold, I mean. Oh, huh. That's why their price went up so high, because the demand. Yeah, the it was... It was price the, should go. That's that's opposite. The price should go down in how much gold you get, or how much gold they cost if more people are buying them for real world money. Well, the current price, the second is eighty five thousand seven hundred thirty nine gold yeah. on North America, and one hundred sixty thousand four hundred seventy five gold on the EU. That's pretty tempting for twenty bucks if you've got you know expendable income. Yeah, expendable. So they were like thirty thousand at the end of WAD. Yeah, well, the main thing was the fact that you can now convert your gold directly into Battle.net bucks, right? Because that's what it is. You you buy, you can use your gold to buy a Bnet to or a WoW token and then resell it. Or is that is that how it works? Resell it for? And they just they just opened that up, but they're they're still two separate markets, I believe. No, they're all the same market. Oh, huh. So yeah. you can convert one into the other. Yeah, and I th I think that's oh, the I reason why the demand went up. Uh, astronomically yeah because people are buying you know they sell their gold like they just use their wow gold to buy like overwatch loot boxes or stuff like that <laughs> yeah <clears throat> yeah someone else was saying that in the chat room that you could basically use the wow gold for for hearthstone and i guess other other uh game products as well interesting but not as interesting as these new traits which we keep trying to go <laughs> over <laughs> you know? uh, so let's so let's look at uh, what's coming in for for Beastmaster. Are these, are, you know, I'm wondering how interesting these are. Other than the the artifact power grind, what will they they do for us in 7.2? Oh. Well, they they look pretty good to me, like mm -hmm. uh, on paper anyway, without trying them. Like the the new four pointer reduces the focus cost of Cobra Shot, which is really nice because you know focus is always a problem. It is, and that's uh, one of those shots where you know you don't want to. You, you got to be careful with it, right? Because you can just drain your focus real quickly, you know, if you don't time it right or don't use it with the appropriate amount of focus. So I think that would be good getting more Cobra shots in there. Yeah, so that increases single target damage, which is kind of a weakness for BM. So that's nice. And then there's a new one pointer called Thunder Slash. Um, Aspect of the Wild causes all active pets to lash out, dealing damage to enemies within five yards. So I don't know how much damage it's going to be, but mm -hmm. again, it sounds good because Aspect of the Wild right now is kind of a crappy cooldown. This might make it better. Yeah, and and so what's the issue with Aspect of the Wild right now? I mean, other than you know, it's it's got a longish cooldown, and it's just not worth much. I mean, yeah. it's it's a it's I don't know. It's just not compared to like other cooldowns. It's just mm -hmm. not very good. Like. So this might make it just more, uh, might make stuff like the uh, the Bracers a little more attractive or Convergence of Fates, the Trinket, a little more attractive, stuff like that. Then the new golden trait is Cobra Commander. Cobra Shot has a chance to create sneaky snakes that attack the target. <laughs> so more single target damage, which is good, um, and sneaky snakes, which is also good. Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. I loved that. <laughs> Even though it's really hard to see, I used to love the snake trap. Is that what it was right. just called, snake yeah. trap? Yeah, we did that yeah. snake trap. That's what I was thinking of, too. It reminded me of like almost like a snake trap built into uh, the, sh the Cobra shot there. Yeah. And just especially, I don't know if anybody's playing BM for PvP right now, but it's uh it was always fun to have snake trap for pvp if people tab targeted or something and ended up just killing a snake you know wasting their time trying to figure out why they were hitting the ground so i i i don't know i just like little silly things like that that was pretty great to see added in
so yeah, overall, I think the BM traits they they look pretty good. And then what do we we can talk about relics too? Because the relics are, we're going to get some new relics as well, correct? I mean, how is that going to work? You didn't want to go over the other two specs. Well, we will in a second. Oh, but okay, I'm just got thinking it. about what the the relics for uh, for Beastmaster were because they were going to allow you to sort of buff up more than multiple traits. I believe was the change that was coming to some of these relics. Oh yeah, they have two traits on each one. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a order hall research. It's like um, we're getting two more researches, and the last one is that. It makes it so that any relic you get after that research is done will have, I think, an extra random trait on it or something like that. That was my question. Is it going to be random? Are you going to get like you know, like the best one and then like the worst one <laughs> or something? You know, you're going to get. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure if it's random. But... Extra two percent dodge. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Good luck. That's what I was thinking. You know, you just you know instead of. Uh... Be interesting to see how that 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 plays out. I wonder like if it, if it is random. I wonder if it could duplicate the first trait. That'd be crazy. You had like two kill command traits mm -hmm. on one relic. Well, that's what I was thinking too. That what if you get lucky, you know, and then <clears throat> be interesting because then you'll just want to. So and that'll just be like the the traits will be on the relics that you get after you have put that into your order hall, correct? Yeah, it won't be retroactive. Right. So everybody's yeah. going to want to get relics. Huh. <laughs> and those researches, by the way, the first one's 20K and then the, the relic one is 30K. So just make sure you save up 50K resources. For yeah, I've been trying Which is to, pretty quick to do these days. To pull that. Yeah, yeah it's not that bad. It's, it's you know. <clears throat> but yeah, that is something to, to, to keep in mind. Um, that, that That's 50K. Of order hall resources there. Did you see how long that lasts, Bindek? How long what lasts? Oh, like the last, the one for two legendaries was 30 days, right? I think it was two weeks. Oh, two weeks, okay. Yeah. So then the new ones are two weeks also? Uh, I think the, the first new one, I forget how long that one is, so I just know that the last one is two weeks research okay. time. Huh. Yeah, I can't imagine there'd be much point to having them go beyond that time frame. I mean, that's a long time. Right, it's kind of the question of what people will have when they're doing the uh, mm -hmm. kind of first progression push. So that'll actually be kind of a nice bonus for, you know, people who aren't world first raiders. Right, right. So we'll get an extra trait on all of our stuff well, and we're trying to take on the hardest bosses. Well, hold on. They said that they were disconnecting um, uh, the patch from the raid. From the raids, right? yeah. So this oh, might come up. Oh yeah. Huh. So this may not have as much of a desired effect on that. I don't know. <laughs> it just feels a lot more iOS game or you know, app phone gamey where you just have to wait for your uh <laughs> stuff to pop before you do anything else. Yeah, that's gonna be an interesting patch. I don't know. <laughs> So what is marksmanship getting for their traits? The the I wouldn't say the forgotten spec, but <laughs> <laughs> so marksmanship gets uh, unerring arrows, which gives you an increase to vulnerability by up mm -hmm. ten percent per raking, and that's our four of you know new. That's your four of four. Four of four, yeah. yeah. Four point one. Um, which I guess means they're leaving in vulnerability despite all the complaints. Uh, feet of the wind is. The new one of one that's not golden. I don't know what you call a regular trait, but uh, aspect of the cheetah is kind of a um, what do you call it? a defensive cooldown now? It's got a 50% dodge chance and immunity to snares. So I don't know if there's a place where you can really use that. I was going to say, I don't know. But it's kind of a fun, I don't know, it'll be fun for soloing, different, different stuff. 50% dodge chance isn't a lot, but. Every once in a while, when I get hit by a boss mechanic, I don't know. It'd be nice to <laughs> dismiss. And the golden trait is called Cyclonic Burst. Um, and Wind Burst also snares the target and deals some amount of damage. I don't uh, I don't know if it's been data mined how much it does yet. 
Um, but it's a, a dot added to your wind burst, mm -hmm. which just makes it a even more important ability. It's already pretty high on the priority list. I'm curious if the snare will uh, proc Cephuse for those of us still miserable enough to have Cephuse. <laughs> That'd be a nice bonus, I guess. And then for survival, your new favorite spec, Delirium, what are you looking forward to there? <laughs> so survival has, uh, you know, I guess they're all the same. So Jaws of the yeah. Mongoose is the new four of four, which just increases critical strike damage of Mongoose bite um, by 5% per rank, so up to 20%. Um, and that actually makes it so now a lot of our, our three of the four main Kind of, or three of the main damaging abilities have an increased crit damage, so not chance. Uh, some of them have an increased chance also. Uh, but I'm, I don't know. It's kind of interesting that that's the direction they're going with survival. Talon bond is the new one of one, um, which it talon strikes triggers, which is it's like a talon strikes is it's a weird <laughs> kind of useless uh, golden trait we already have um, that makes your basic attacks like your melee attacks do double uh, or triple damage. I guess they just happen three times in a row real quick, um, which is odd. I'm not sure what all can proc it. <laughs> I should know that probably. Uh, so Talon Strikes, just this new one, Talon Bond, I guess just makes your pet do the same thing. Anytime Talon Strikes goes off, your pet also gets a couple swipes in there. Um, so it's just kind of generic, boring damage increase. Mm -hmm. It, uh, like you can't control it at all. It's completely passive. Um, and then the last golden trank, uh, trank. What did I trait? Trait. Yeah, we don't have trank anymore. <laughs> trank flanking is gone. <laughs> so flanking strike has a chance to summon the spirit of Holn High Mountain and Achero. Um, I haven't played this on the PTR, so I had no idea what it does. But it summons somebody who smites your foes. Hopefully that's cool. I don't know what it means. If it's extra pets hey, or sounds awesome, I think. Well, yeah. Holden, Holden High Mountain is that the the Torn guy who used to own the Talonclaw spear, mm -hmm. okay. and then Achero was his pet. Huh. Moose. So that sounds pretty awesome to me. Oh, Achero was the moose. I didn't even know. That. Yeah, didn't it, you ever play that scenario? Yeah, in, uh, I High have, Mountain? but I probably yeah. didn't pay much attention to what pet I had. Anyways, yeah, I don't know. They're all fairly passive, which is unexciting, but oh well. Mooses are fun. Yeah, that one sounds cool. That sounds like the best one of the bunch, actually. I mean, like all across the board between the marksmanship and what, but we have Beast Mastery. For Beast Mastery. Well, we do have snakes for Beast Mastery, yes. And I just sort of this idea of you, you know. Especially Beastmaster, who uses that uses guns. Just the idea that you're loading up these snakes into the barrel of your gun <laughs> <laughs> and shooting them off. <laughs> it's like that scope we had, the flint, flintlocks. Uh, was it squirrel chucker or whatever it was called? Yeah. 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 And now Beastmaster can join in all the snake memes that survival gets currently. Mm -hmm. well, welcome to the club. But how are you enjoying survival so far? Are you are you sticking with it now, Delirium? Oh uh, no, I'm I. Oh, so in Nighthold, it already? at this point, I'm playing more marksmanship than I am survival because I have a significantly higher eye level artifact weapon. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm at 923 as marksmanship, and I'm still like barely at 900 on survival just because I can't get relics. So that's kind of lame. It's still, I think, survival is by far the most fun spec we have, but melee is not the most fun for me, at least. I'm sure people who like melee is fun new fun. I have been pretty much exclusively playing survival in world quests and dungeons and such. Um, even most uh, mythic quest dungeons, it's just I don't know, got more utility and more chance to both stay alive and I don't know. Do good burst AOE. So it's fun. Marksmanship's not too bad. 
has it gotten better? I mean, I haven't really haven't touched marksmanship much uh, really at all since since Nighthold, and I've just been really focused with with Beast Mash, and I'm actually pretty happy with it. I'm enjoying it a lot. You know, I almost wish I had done it in the beginning, but I'm more or less caught up to where I was with with marksmanship. Yeah, with you know, actually, I'm I'm ahead now with 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 my Beast Mastery than I was than I am with marksmanship, but I like it. It's fun. But I gotta give. I do have to give survival a look for no other reason than to get the artifact weapon and and, and go through that that <laughs> one scenario just to see what it is. But back to my question. So marksmanship seems to have gotten it's like the furor over it that was you know initially no. going on. Is it still raging? Yeah, it's still yeah. raging. It's. I mean, it's. I. I don't know if others agree with this or not, but I just think it's a very poorly designed spec right mm-hmm. now. It doesn't have much of anything going for it. I mean, I don't think it's not the worst thing ever, but there's just nothing interesting about it. There's nothing compelling about it. You know, Beast Mastery, I do think is, I just find the rotation incredibly boring, but there's still a lot going for the spec. There's still a lot that's fun about being a Beast Mastery hunter. And they they fixed the the two-piece set bonus. uh, Oh, they did? Yeah, that was hot fixed, so it now works with uh, Dire Frenzy. I didn't see the result. How did, how did they implement that? So when you have Dire Frenzy selected as your talent, anytime you go into Beast of Wrath, your main pet does 10% more damage for the whole duration, hmm. which is pretty strong. Yeah, that is pretty yeah, strong. And does that make it uh, desirable over Dire Beast? Or really... it's it's pretty good now, like especially for single target. It's mm-hmm. anytime your pet can just stay on the boss and not have to move anywhere. It's pretty nice. Yeah, I have to say with, with with Nighthold, that's the one thing I'm doing a lot more in playing Beastmaster is I got to carry a lot more of those tomes around and I'm switching up talents for for the various fights, which I guess is fine, but you know, I wish they hadn't made it so kind of expensive to to talent switch like that. Yeah, I've been doing so much talent swapping in Nighthold. Like, it seems like almost every boss I'm changing at least mm-hmm. one talent. Right, I mean, it's just, and it's just like a little thing here or there, whether you whether you're going for a single target AOE or or whatnot. <clears throat> but there's there's enough variety in those fights that enough nuance that you know it makes you know it really helps to to switch out like that. At least with our guild, I think everyone's kind of on their own with those tomes. Isn't there something uh, you can make for the group that allows the group to to switch? I haven't really paid much <laughs> yeah, attention to that. And they made it a lot cheaper recently. Did, so. did they? Yeah. Yeah, so those, whoever your guild inscription is, should have tons of them, or mm. very easy, accessible. Yeah, it'd probably be cheaper just to have, like, the guild drop one of those before every boss. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what we do. Even on, like, you know, heroics or normals where where, uh, where it doesn't really matter that much, we're dropping them on every boss, just because they're cheap enough and somebody's going to ask. But yeah, I was curious. But I did notice that they said they they did fix the 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 two piece set bonus for that. So that's good. So it's, and it's actually kind of funny because for a couple of days there, on like Tuesday and Wednesday, it was bugged so that you got that ten percent <laughs> bonus even if you were using the other talents. Oh boy! <laughs> I'm like, why is my damage higher? Oh, mm. that's why. <laughs> but did I did get four pieces? I did get a, a the four piece set bonus this week, so I've been playing with that. So that's. I was very happy with that. <laughs> oh yeah, it's really nice. It's mm-hmm. So many beast to wraths. Yeah, we uh, in my guild we give out two pieces to pretty much everybody before anybody gets their four pieces. But I lucked out, and right after I got my two piece, I coined the two other pieces. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I don't know, I don't know how it worked out so well. Yeah, unfortunately, we <laughs> unfortunately, both of them were. Uh, on normal, so now I'm sure I used up all my luck, and I'm not going to get <laughs> heroic or mythic ones anytime soon. But at least it wasn't LFR. <laughs> now I have no reason to run LFR too. Right. Well, you know, it's kind of funny. Uh, I got one of my pieces. I already had the four piece, but I went <laughs> to LFR, and I I got the gloves and the Titan Force to like 880. Oh, nice. LFR. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually wear wearing them. Well, I'm going to pretend you never told me that, so I don't have to go into LFR myself. Right now you're thinking, oh, wait a minute. should go in there and hope to get 
that's where you get your upgrades from. <laughs> your procs. Yeah, it's not a bad place to complete tier bonuses because they're mm -hmm. 860. It's not like the end of the world. I mean, it's yeah. definitely worth it to complete a bonus. Yeah, depending on what you're playing, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But no, overall, I, I thought it was a good raid. I mean, we we hopefully we're going to start heroic here soon. We're slow, <clears throat> but we're not quite done with normal. We did Gul'dan last week in one percent, and we lost. I was so mad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, you just... But it's not a bad fight. <clears throat> Yeah, that's one that I think it's easy to wipe toward the end there, and it gets mm -hmm. real frustrating. There's a lot going on at the last couple seconds. I don't know what the difference in heroic would be between that and normal. I think is there like a an ad or something you have to deal with at some point? But I'll I'll have to look. But overall, it was a pretty good fight. Yeah, yeah, I was happy with the raid. I thought I don't know. There was a few things that were very gimmicky. Like the time fluxes, mm -hmm. I would be fine if we don't see any mechanics like that again for the next few expansions. <laughs> but other than that, yeah, it was it was interesting. There weren't any crazy mechanics that I thought like, oh, that was just brilliant. But there was nothing too horrible either. So no, no. Well, hopefully Roger will come back soon, and we can hear from him on how you know his experience was going through it all on mythic uh, yeah so we've got four teams who've killed mythic Gul'dan, and still uh still waiting to see who's going to be next and finish out the mm -hmm. top five i'm not sure how many guilds are are pushing hard right now but uh, it turned out interesting i'm not sure i can't remember when the last time we saw Ex exorcist is always up there you know, mm -hmm. in top five, top ten guild, but I can't remember the last time they got a world first, so it's nice to see those guys. I, I don't recall. I mean, Method was pretty dominant until this yeah. expansion, and I think it was, what, Paragon before yeah, them? Paragon. Were the ones, so. It looks like Exorcist was uh, world first Xavius. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I had forgotten. Huh. So, that's all. So they did Emerald Night. I couldn't remember who did that. Who was Emerald Nightmare that was them or uh, Serenity, Serenity that had done that. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, it just seems like it was very, very competitive. I don't know. I was trying to follow it a little bit. And I guess there's always some shenanigans and things that, that go on, I guess. what yeah. which, Was it Serenity or Exorcist? One of those had their like raid kind of hijacked. Yeah, by one for, of the non-raiding members of Method. Serenity. That was too bad to see. Was it Serenity? Yeah, had their their the lockout was taken. Mm hmm. And then someone was were they banned or they had some kills taken away or a kill taken away? I think one of the groups did too. Oh, I didn't see that. Someone I think exploited one of the bosses. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. Star Augur. Right. Star Augur, yeah. I think it was. <clears throat> the other Russian guild. <laughs> yeah, I I forget what they did. But it was something ridiculous. It was hearthing, hearthing during one of the ad spawns. The tank has to hearth out. Apparently, it wasn't a hearth. It was something else. Oh, it else. wasn't. Oh, okay. okay, that's okay. That would make sense because I mean, hearthing out. I don't know. I think I, I can't even imagine where you know you get that idea <laughs> to try that. Yeah, but they somehow got the ad outside of the encounter area. Oh, they did. Okay. But I knew it was something. I'd, I'd heard Harthing too initially, and it just seemed like, what, 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 what's going on here? <laughs> you know, was that some sort of fluke thing that they discovered? You know, someone was trying to, why even someone would hearth out, you know, to avoid, you know, getting killed in a wipe situation? Or I, I, I don't know. Maybe their guild didn't provide repairs and they couldn't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it sounds like it was overall pretty pretty good race. I don't know how, how I don't know how long it took Method, uh, how far behind they were in the end. I mean they they needed another day or something to to pull it out. Yeah, I think it was because it was at least a day before Serenity killed it. I think it was a day or two again for Method. 
I thought I had those notes up here somewhere, but now I can't see them. Too many tabs. That does sound about right. It's still a good race. Yeah, it was a good race. I think Exorcist tweeted out too that they what they did like two hundred forty eight pulls. I think on Gul'dan is what they reported out. <laughs> yeah, which is not super high for a world first. I don't no, know how that compares no, to I mean, other. It's still high though. I mean, it's it's high for. I mean, it's just. <laughs> I think Serenity had uh, like eighty more or something like that. Yeah, 80. I think they want to say three hundred forty seven is what I think they they did on wow. Gul'dan. Yeah, that's a lot of pulls. Man. Which is nuts. I mean, you know, I don't know how many. What's that's cool? a long fight, too, right? I mean, it's not like that's a, yeah, it wasn't, a, yeah. a five minute encounter. Um, did did Roger Brown or somebody tweet that uh, that they took almost what was it six hundred pulls on uh, Star Augur? Does that sound right? Yeah, I saw somebody talking about that. Method had it on their website. Okay, yeah, uh, that that's insane to me. Like how. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe Star Augur should have been the final boss. <laughs> well, I think other guilds didn't. It was just dependent on your your uh, comp, oh, okay. like what you had available for that fight. And that's always I don't know. That's a kind of an interesting meta game with the raid race. Every tier is the uh, so most guilds plan for you know what comp they're going to take into the last boss. Right. But then the last on Emerald Nightmare, you really had to plan for what boss you're going to take into the second last, or what comp you're going to take into the second to last boss, because the last boss didn't matter nearly as much. So here, yeah, I don't know if, if they were really planning on Gul'dan and and then uh, didn't have the right comp for Star Augur or how it worked out. Yeah. And someone was saying in, in the chat room that lots of pulls, but many are probably just send 10 seconds in and then they call it a wipe. Yeah, I know I was wondering about that because, you know, if it, it's like they, they must do stuff like that, right? They, you know, if they either, they can tell right away that they didn't, you know, execute some aspect of it right, right out of the gate, they probably just say, you know what, I'm not even going to deal with it. <laughs> Which takes a lot of, uh, you know, sort of patience and determination to, to do that. Well, uh, I was checking the Method website today. Uh, it turns out they mm -hmm. have an interview with Exorcius uh, just posted uh, oh, cool. a little bit ago. So, uh, and, you know, if you're looking for some reading material about the World First Race, uh, that was pretty interesting, or it should be pretty in interesting. I haven't finished reading it yet, but um, talks about a little bit more about Mythic Nighthold and uh, also the other races so far this expansion so i'll leave you guys with that <laughs> yeah no, i want to read that i can't talk on the show anymore <laughs> yeah so well it is we're we are coming up on an hour here so why don't we call it a day uh, for this week and then we'll, we'll come back next time but with that uh you have been listening to episode 254 of the hunting party podcast dark brew from the brewhall.com and the brew hall on twitter I'm Delirium from ThrillTheWild.com and at Delirium Hunts on Twitter. I'm Ben Neck from Eyes of the Beast, Blizzard Watch, and Ben Neck Wow on Twitter. All right, check us out on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, or at our RSS feed to your reader. And we'll, of course, have these links available in the show notes. If you have a question or a topic you would like us to discuss on the show, email us at huntingpartypodcast at gmail.com or send us a tweet at huntingpartypod. All right, stay thirsty, my friends. Remember to drink your dark brew lager. Siempre presta la moción de los salvajes. Keep your eyes on the beast. Dark lady, watch over you.
worried about my threat Cause I've got FD and misdirect Catching loose mobs in my traps I never miss cause I am hip cat Cause I'm the hunter not the marked I'm the fighter not the spark Now let's begin with Illidan, Osirian, and Gilgadim, Magdamar, Asgore, Gruul, Cthulhu, and Razorgore, Onyxia to Ragnaros, which one have we killed the most? Kel'Thuzad to Malios, we even killed Akama's ghost. Oh, I need to get